uh, censor information within that China so the people in China, the, the Chinese, not the CCP, but the real people of China, don't even know or learn about their own history. Tiananmen Square, um, really what happened with the, uh, the horrors of Mao Zedong and his cultural revolution, the millions that were killed, they're not learning about their own history in China. And Google has helped China control their own people. So the question is, why has China given Google the boot? So there's other talk right now on the web, perhaps, of because Google and the CIA are very much linked together, and they're spying on our searches and logging it and whatnot in these giant databases. They may have been spying on China. There's been a lot of cyber attacks going back and forth, and Russia's also been involved in this. This has been going on for a couple of years. You know, a lot of you out there think that um, the United States will never be defeated militarily in any way, shape, uh, or form possible. Yet China funds our war, and they've already hacked into our pentagons. The technology is already out there. The missile technology is already out there. EMP weaponry that can literally destroy all electronics in a part of the United States if they decide to strike, if they can get through our defenses. This is the reality of the situation. How would they be able to get through our defenses? If they can hack into the Pentagon's computers, if they can hack into our defenses, they can shut it down. And no, now those reports are coming out. That our whole system is extremely d volatile. It's weak. It's obsolete in comparison to the computers that they're working with. Then, then if that's happening, why is the United States building supercomputers and giving them to China? We have these reports too. Intel just built a huge supercomputer and gave it to China. Now China's leading the way. What is happening here? Also take a look at IBM going into China in 1997 and their part in the big economic boom that took place at that time in the late 1990s. There's something going on here that we need to pay very close attention to. This isn't a conspiracy theory. A lot of the stuff that you thought were theories years ago are now coming to fruition. And you know you're being lied to on a grand, large scale. Why would you not want to investigate some of the stuff to find out whether what I'm telling you is real or totally fake? The reason why we have those head headlines up there, and we'll go to the next one in a minute, is to show you that these aren't articles I'm making up. This is real. And if you put some of these articles together for yourself, if your, eye, if your eyes are open, you have the ears to hear, you can connect the dots for yourself and see the pattern taking place here. You can learn to teach yourself how to follow the money. Find out why Bank of America is so well invested in China. It goes on and on and on. Here's another report you might want to Google. China has growing clout in Congress as lobbyists at this time. I mean, I'm just wondering at what point do the Chinese buy NBC? NBC, by the way, and Comcast are merging. And uh, that is the, uh, the corporate juggernaut of power that's gunning for Access TV. And um, also gunning to end net neutrality on the Internet. I want to go back and give you a flashback report. And we're going to go back to October 2008, which is the last time that we talked about this. And it very much fits in with the larger picture and what we talked about tonight thus so far. Rand lobbies Pentagon start war to save U.S. economy. According to reports out of the top Chinese mainstream news outlets, the Rand Corporation recently presented a shocking proposal to the Pentagon in which it lobbied for a war to be started with a major foreign power in an attempt to stimulate the American economy and prevent a recession. A fierce debate has now ensued in China about who that foreign power may be, with China itself as well as Russia and even Japan suspected to be the targets of aggression. The report cites a French media news source uh, as having uncovered the proposal in which Rand suggested that the trillions of dollars that have been earmarked to bail out Wall Street and failing banks instead be used to finance a new war which would in turn reinvigorate the stock market. The Rand Corporation is notoriously powerful. It's a notoriously powerful NGO with deep ties to the U.S. military industrial complex, as well as interlocking connections with the Ford, Rockefeller, and Carnegie Foundations. Now, reportedly, the Rand proposal brazenly urged that a new war could be launched to benefit the economy, but stressed that the target country would have to be a major influential power, not a smaller country on the scale of Iraq and Afghanistan. In the latest budget proposal for the military, it's about funding two wars at the same time, these smaller regional wars, Afghanistan and Iraq, and whatever the hell they're preparing for in the next couple of years. The reports have uh, prompted a surge of public debate and tension in China about the possibility that a new global conflict is on the horizon. 
China's uh, biggest media outlet, Sohu.com, S-O-H-U.com, speculated that the target of the new war would probably be China or Russia, but that it could also be Iran or another Middle Eastern country. Japan was also mentioned as a potential target for the reason that Japan holds the most U.S. debt. North Korea was considered as a target, but ruled out because the scale of such a war would not be large enough for Rand's requirements. Reported Rand proposal dovetails with recent comments made by Joe Biden last year, Colin Powell and Madeleine Albright and others concerning the guarantee that Barack Obama will face a major international crisis soon after taking office. So certainly there's a lot of stuff transpiring. I know it's terrifying. And when it comes to getting prepared, as cliche as it sounds, you've got to prepare your heart and soul. It's much more than having some uh, grains and some canned food. But on that note, I hope you are getting some extra uh, pieces of canned food here and there. Whatever you eat. Pork and beans, I don't know. That stuff doesn't uh, uh, agree with me too much. And so I, there's a lot of canned food I steer clear from. But for a lot of us that want to eat organic, you know, when it comes down to it, if it comes down to staying alive, you'll be really happy if you get some extra, whether it be Nally chili or some Campbell's soup or whatnot. And so, you know, say you're on food stamps right now. A lot of you are. Some of you are on unemployment. Um, take what little you have and start setting a little away. It's not about being paranoid or this, that, and the other. It's about having some real life insurance. And you also should get prepared in some other ways if you have the ability to do so. But if you are one of those that feels stuck in the city, that you don't have any money to get out, that you don't have any family, see, all these things pertain to me. Finding other people, people of like minds, developing community, it's therapeutic. Surrounding yourself with other people that are loving, that aren't terrified, that also kind of know what's going on. And the importance of that is so you can rely on them. So what, when these things do transpire, they're not going to panic. They're not going to be surprised because they also, like you, were prepared. And so I urge you to find the others. And I realize there's a lot of the others. There's a lot of us. There's a lot of people like me that are here in Portland. They may not know exactly what's going on. They may even be on the Obama bandwagon. But every Obama zombie out there, I believe, is truly a liberty-loving individual just waiting to come out of the closet, so to speak. All they need is a little bit of time to understand what's really going on. Then hopefully we can come together. But unfortunately, things have to get a little worse before they get better. So I'm asking you to get prepared and learn to find a way to center yourself, to be calm, to maybe learn about conflict uh, resolution, nonviolent communication skills. You know, there's going to be a lot of people panicking. You know, there was a full moon last week, one of the most intense of the whole year. People were acting really wacky, and I was looking at the number of murders and stabbings in Portland. In fact, another Portland police officer killed another unarmed guy. A guy that got killed also, which is really bizarre, his brother died of uh, either a heart attack or uh, liver failure the same day. Two brothers died in Portland. Two black men died for different reasons on the same day on the full moon. There are some weird things going on out there. There's a lot of people that are very, very emotional at this time. Mulligans on Hawthorne, uh, they just got their window replaced. Uh, on the night of the full moon, a guy walked by, a couple was sitting there and put his foot through it. And I've seen a lot of violent things in this town. I've seen people really just totally lose it. And so be aware, when people lose everything, some people lose everything up here. They're not like you. They're not like me. They're not aware of what's going on. And when things get tough, they take their aggression they take their anger, they take their rage out on others. And so these are things to be aware of. All right, where are we? So many things to talk about. AlexAnswer.com is a website. Email me if you want to get involved volunteer-wise or if you'd like to contribute to the show to help keep it online. I'm also looking for some camera equipment or a place to do the show because we don't have a lot of time anymore to do our show in the studio. So if you'd like to help out, this is the time to get a hold of me. Alex underscore answer at hotmail.com. Children prisoners of the U.S. War on Terror. This is a report by Kenneth J. Thiessen, writing on the website, theworldcantwait.net. Take a deep breath, and we'll get ready to segue to some of the other pieces of news. I know it's a lot, but there's a reason why I'm bringing you this information, a reason why it fits in with the larger picture. Many people in this country are aware of the atrocity, atrocious conditions and treatment of adult prisoners in the U.S. War on Terror. These prisoners have been held at Abu Ghraib, Guantanamo, 
Bagram, and other hell holes run by the U.S., but few are aware that thousands of children have also been taken by the United States and its 